morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Morning, morning, morning. So um, we have two uh, topics today to cover. The first one we'll cover is to deal with uh, pod files and how can we have multiple targets in our pod file. Currently, our projects, we've been using one target in the pod file, a default target, whatever the project name is. But uh, currently in our project, if we are testing, which we should be testing because that's a requirement, we need to now have two targets in our pod file, right? So in our pod file, we need to have two targets. And in those two targets, we need to put in the pods that we want to include in that particular target. So basically, the first part of today will cover how can we have a pod file with multiple targets, OK? When I talk about targets, I'm saying we have two targets. The first target is the project itself with all its view controllers, its models, views, et cetera. And the second target is going to be the unit test target. Those are the two targets I'm talking about. Everybody clear? Yes. Any questions about that? Any of yeah. us found any errors yet so far with testing and we have, for example, Firebase errors? What do you mean by errors? Um, I think a mini yesterday you had an error, correct? When you were testing your model, you said you had a Firebase error? Yeah, when I, um, when I attempt to um, access any of the files that are in my project folder, it says um, that I need to import a Firebase module. That was the error that I was getting. Everybody got that from Emini here? Yeah. OK, cool. So Emini is facing a situation where she has some model to test or some part of her app she wants to test. That app, that part of the app is in the main project target. And right now, she has a test target which doesn't know about Firebase. So our objective today is to make that test target know about the Firebase pods or whatever pods that particular model has. Because in the, go ahead. Is this if you create a project without tests? Uh, we'll actually create the project we have without a test and then we'll add a test. But even if you have a test to begin with or you add a test after the fact, it will still affect you. So affect how? Because what exactly is she testing that gave her an error? In her model, there's probably an import Firebase somewhere. Correct, Amini? Yes. Right. In so, the model that import Firebase? Yes, because in whatever model she's working with, if you have a user model or whatever model, and anytime you want to do something with Firebase in that particular model, you have to import Firebase, correct? Okay, well, maybe it's because I didn't, I don't know. I don't have yes, any error. Exactly. If, take a look at your model. If you do not have an import statement for Firebase in there, you're not going to get an error. Okay, I just used Network Helper to do my test because I just I'm familiar with that. Right, so that's fine there because Network Helper is part of Swift Package Manager, and the test also sees the Swift Package Manager there. But with pods, it's different. We have to add it as we need it. Then, all right, cool. So let's see what we're talking about. We'll all create a new project, and we'll see exactly the objective. The objective is to have my pod file have multiple targets in there so that uh, an, a mini error doesn't happen as we go further into our project. OK, everybody cool? Yeah. Yep. Any questions before we start? No. OK. All right, so we let's open up Xcode. Well, not this. Let's close that. Uh, open. It's going to be a new project. So new project. Can we all see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to new project. I'm going to new project, right? And it's a single view application. Are we doing this with you? I'm sorry? We're creating the project with you, yeah? Yes, we're all creating the project together so we have it as a resource as we go deeper into our Firebase um, CTA there. Okay, so the project name, we'll call it uh, pod file, multiple targets. So we're not including 
unit tests? We're not including unit tests. We'll add it after the fact. Because I also get a lot of questions about how can I add unit tests after I have a project, right? And the collect the size. So make sure that we do not check the include unit test here. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so cute. He brought me a marshmallow. All right. Uh, cool. So port file multiple targets, uh, no core data, no unit test, no UI test, and we go next. And I save it at the desktop. That's okay. I'll select my simulator. Okay, so this is our project here. Everybody has a project created? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's go over to Terminal. Are we, yeah, go ahead, Eric. Are we, supposed, are we supposed to be seeing a Zoom view? Like you're zoomed in? You should be able to see my Xcode screen. Like the whole thing? Because I can't. Uh, I can, can see from right above iPhone. Where is check that? You just went on screen. Uh, so you guys are not able to see my entire Xcode screen? I can. You yeah, can, Amir. I can. Yeah. I can get my X code. Uh, Sloan, are you able to see my entire okay, X code I'm screen? I'm better now. I'm better, yeah, I'm better now. I can see the whole thing. If anyone else is having difficulty seeing the full screen, um, you could try going up to the very top of Zoom, and I'll say you were viewing Alex Paul's screen view options. Potentially, you might be like hyper zoomed in. Um, so yeah, that's click fit to window. I just, I, mine's is good now. Okay, cool. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. So now let's uh, actually navigate to terminal. So everybody, let's go to terminal. We'll install or we'll create a pod init file. Everybody navigate <coughs> over. Everybody navigate over to terminal. Um, at my desktop, this is where my project is. What do we call it? Pod, pod file. We call it pod file multiple targets. So now we want to navigate to our project. So it was called pod file multiple targets. If I type in LS, it shows me what I have currently. Currently, I do not have a pod file, correct? Yeah. Okay, cool. So how do we create a pod file again? Or how do we start a pod file or add Cocoa Pods? Pod in it. Pod in it. Okay, so we type in pod in it. And at that point, I could do LS and see pod file here, okay? We'll go one step further. We'll actually run pod install. Even though there's no pods? No pods yet, but we'll actually just run pod install to create the XC workspace. Because currently we do not have an XC workspace. If I do LS, I do not have an XC workspace, correct? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna run pod install to create that XC workspace. That way we could actually navigate to the project with the XC workspace open. So we'll go ahead and run port install. At that point, I will do LS and I now have an XC workspace, right? And to reiterate, the XC workspace now has a pods and a regular project folder. Cool? Mm -hmm. Everybody's yes. up to this point? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. May you have a question? No, I'm good. Okay, good, perfect. So I really next, like. Say that again. That was the Google Home. Okay, so right now let's go ahead and close our Xcode project, the one we just created. Close it. And why are we closing it? Because now we need to open the XE workspace. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So I will go to File, Open. I'll go to the pods file we just created, the pod file project we just created. I will double click on XE workspace here. I'll double click on XE workspace in order to open it. And now we have our pod file target and our pods project as well. Do we see that? Do we all have that? Yes. All right, cool. So now let's navigate to the port file. 
this is the pod file here. This is all the pod files we have. So far, so good? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Next, let's go ahead and edit this. So everybody is at line eight here where it says pods for pod mm -hmm. targets. Yes. yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and install some Firebase pods. We'll say pod Firebase Firestore or auth first. Then we'll say pod Firebase Firestore. That's fine for now. We could include more pods, but this is okay to get us started. Firebase. All right, so how do I get both of these screens on at the same time? Because I have to keep them going back and forth. Uh, can you split the screens up? Possibly like have Xcode in the top, at the top part of the screen and have, um, have Zoom at the bottom half of it. Can that work for you? How do I do that? Uh, I would drag, I drag the, I would drag the window. Yeah. How do I drag the window? Because that's what's like below mine. Uh, like Xcode, right? The Xcode project, probably. I will drag it weird. I will drag this, like, <laughs> make it half the screen. Uh, Tiffany, can you see my screen? Yeah. I'll drag the window such that it's about half the screen, maybe. That could probably work. And then put um, zoom in the upper half. Okay, let me see. By just dragging it with the, the arrow here. So, Tiffany, if you go to the top part where it says, um, view options, you can exit full screen, and then you can manipulate the screen however you want for Zoom. Like you can do what Alex is saying, but you have to exit out of full screen. Yes, yeah, so you have you to exit out of, yeah. I feel like... Um... Another thing you could do is you could put it on your phone and stream through the phone and just use your X code on the, on the laptop. Uh... Uh, okay, so you said view. It doesn't say exit full screen. Uh, the view options? Yeah, it doesn't say exit. It says show participants and show chat. Um, I have the way. Uh, for now, for now, is it possible to? We'll keep going slower as possible, um, Tiff, and then we could help you offline later to set up a better experience for the viewing of Zoom okay. and Xcode. If I make it smaller, I don't know, maybe you can make your screen bigger because right now like, it looks like, better. Like my, uh, the fonts and stuff? Yeah. Okay, cool. Is that better? That's better, much better. Okay, cool. So here we have our, um, our Firebase auth and we have Firebase Firestore. Everybody has that? Yes. Okay, so now let's navigate back to terminal. We're in terminal. What do we run to go ahead and install those dependencies? Pod install. Pod install. Pod install. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, if you have any error, that means there was probably a typo with the pods that we put into our pod file. But at this point, everything should have been installed correctly. We should have all greens there, say install. Anybody stuck with not being, being able to install the dependencies? Are we all okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now we're getting back to the project. Let us go to our main project, open up the pod file, multiple targets folder there. And we're seeing our files. So navigate to app delegate, sim delegate, make sure we could see all those files there. And we'll create a new file. So we'll create a new file. So file, new file. It's a Swift file. I'll call it user or better DB user. Okay. It's a Swift file. Call it DB user, DB for database user. Where are you putting that? It's going to be in our pod file multiple targets folder. Where we, where we have our uh, app, app delegate and everything else. Yeah. All right. 
So the file is called DB user and we click create. At this point, we have a file. It's going to be a model. So we say struct DB user. And we'll have a property here. We'll call it name. You could put in your name here. I just put in my name. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next step, we want to go ahead and test that particular model. A simple test. A simple test to say if the name here is indeed the name you put in. That's all. Just a simple test. Um, so first, we'll go ahead and create a unit test target because currently we do not have a unit test target. So where do we go to navigate to get a unit test target? Um, do we see the arrow pane here where my mouse is currently? Yes. Right here? Do we see the arrow pane? Yeah. yeah. Right. So to the right, to the right of it, do we see test target like a diamond there? Yes. Okay. So click on test target or test navigator rather. Click on test navigator. Did we all click on test navigator? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Uh, to the very bottom left, do we see a add a add button? Mm -hmm. Click on the add button. New unit test target? Yes. Do we all see new unit test target? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tanya, do I get a thumbs up there? Sterling, do I get a thumbs up? Cool. Lilia, Oscar, Howard? Cool. So click on new unit test target. And we'll keep the product name the same. It takes the, um, if you do not have a target, a test target yet, it will take the project name and append test to it. Right? So our project name is port file multiple target and it appends test to it. Right? So that's the default we'll keep here. And then next we click finish. Right? So if we go back to our project navigator, click on that first folder here, the project navigator. Now we should navigate down and see a multiple target test. Do we see multiple target tests here? Mm -hmm. yes. If we click on yeah. it, there's a test in there, right? There's one test in there, right? Mm -hmm. A subclass yeah. of XC test case. Cool? Awesome. So let's go ahead. Everybody should be now in the test.swift file. We'll remove the four functions we have here. So now this is what we should be looking at. An empty class subclass of XC test case. I will write a unit test now to test our model DB user. Simple okay. test? Yes. Um, so when I when I did this and I created a unit test, um, it, it, uh, it, it prompted me to select between the pod file or the, the project file as like a target. Uh, Let's walk back through this. So when you click on, are you the only person who got this so far? So if I click on add new unit test target, correct? Yes. And you said you went, well, I'm not gonna create a new one, but when you clicked finish, it prompted you for one of the targets, one of the- I can't remember if it was before I clicked finish or if it, it immediately came up as I had to choose, but it did give me- So choose the project. At which I did. I chose the part. Okay. Um, if there's any other issues, we'll have to probably recreate it to see exactly what happened there. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, everybody has now the screen import exit test, uh, class port file, multiple target test, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you import or when you create a new unit test target, you do not get everything you get for free when you do it from scratch from the beginning of the project. What I'm talking about is now we need to say what we want to test. So we need to go ahead and say at testable here. So at testable, 
import the target we want to test. In that case, we want to test the port file. We want to test the port file project. So this is the port file project. This is the port file project. We also want to import. What are we doing here on line 10 is import that entire target here. That includes all the files. App delegate, now I have access to DB user. I have access to view controller by this import statement. And we have to append at testable. I can just say import like this. I need to say at testable, import the project. Cool. So let's continue on. We will write a function. We'll say test DB user. And again, to reiterate, every time you write a test, you have to prefix it with the word test, all lowercase. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. OK, so let's go ahead and put in our stubs. So we'll start off by arranging. We'll act. And we'll have some sort of a cert. In our arrange, we'll say expected name be my name. Let's make it fail first. I'll just put Paul here. For act, I'm expecting, let's go ahead and call the function here. So I'll say let system on the test. SUT stands for system under test, the thing you're testing. We also need to go ahead and get a user instance. So this creates a user instance, creates a user instance or DB user, sorry, DB user. The reason why I'm using DB user here, by the way, because Firebase also has a user. So if you're creating like some sort of user entity in your project, try your best to not name it user. Okay. Um, so DB user, we have an instance of user. Now we could say user dot name. And we'll go on to our assert part of it. Now we'll say XC Equal to, uh, equal to exactly equal to expected or SUT. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my system on the test should be equal to my expected name. What I'm saying here is whatever I'm getting back from that DB user, the name I'm getting back from that DB user should be equal to this expected name here. And looking at it, we know it's going to fail, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and run our test here. And for this one, you don't need to put a weight or nothing. We only put the weight if it's like coming from online or something. Uh, yeah, not, exactly. A, a synchronous. If it's a synchronous, yeah. if it's a synchronous, it's no longer a unit test. It's an asynchronous test. Then you put expected and weight. And that would be like when we use the endpoints and stuff like that, because it has to check an endpoint. Uh, if you're doing it via network helper, yes. Okay. But ideally, to test your models, you probably want to grab some JSON from Postman and test that. Yeah. And yeah. put it into a multi string. Yeah. Exactly. A exactly. Multi -string. Exactly. So <coughs> I'm still running here. Um, my test is still running. Projects are building. Again, there's a lot of pod files here from, um, I mean, pods from Firebase. So it takes a while to build. And I'm also running the test <coughs> on my simulator. Did anybody test finish yet? No, because I had other files open, so I just closed those. Okay. It's still gone. My computer is like... Oh, really? Like a mini's computer? I mean, did you get a new computer, or you still have the no, the I fan? Can't. You still have the fan? I just had to turn everything off. Because... Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. almost there. I have 2300 of 2396. So... My fan also just started screaming now. Yes, that side screaming. Yeah. Yep. 
Sometimes when you stop it and do it over, it like does it a little faster. And if you close out the other X code, I just have to close out my project. And... The first time it will take longer here. So as expected, our test failed. Let's just click on the failure. So here it says Alex is not equal to Paul, right? Which makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but if I wanted to pass, I'll simply put in Alex here and run it again. Should take a look. Uh, yeah, there you go. So at that point, my test passed. So I'll stop before we continue to make sure everybody was able to um, configure the test and run the test and have a, a pass test, okay? And then we'll continue. So everybody who's here, you give a thumbs up and then we'll know that you're good to go. Give a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing this a thumbs up, very good. How do we do that? It's um, on reactions next to share screen on the bottom. All right, I'm gonna clap my hands. So. I see Serene clapping. Very good. Oh, they're only. Kevin, Kevin, did I get feedback from you yet? I haven't seen anything. Oh, I missed it. Maybe. Okay, cool. Thanks, dude. Uh, Jahid. My computer is really bugging out. Um. In in future yeah, lessons. In future lessons, you know what we should do? Like we should all uh, shut down our computers, restart it, and only have the only necessary applications we need. Because even me, I do that too. Sometimes I forget. When I forget, it's like, oh my God. Um, so like try to shut it down, not now, but shut down, restart, whatever, and then only have what you need, like Xcode, Slack, if you need Slack. At this point, we're not using Slack if you're on Zoom, ideally. So I would even close Slack as well and only have like Xcode and Zoom open, if that makes sense? Yeah, tell me to close Slack. No, yeah. Alex, now have an error for no such a module as what uh, Just run, run the test anyway, because I think yours is like a Xcode issue on your end. Run the test anyway, does it still fail? Well, it's still running. Yeah, run really? it anyway, run it anyway. And if not, close Xcode and reopen it. Oh, and you can't, okay, you have to run it on your, on like the simulator. The you, simulator. I mean, the test. you could run it on your device. You could run it on your device as well. Yeah, because it just told me that the phone wasn't connected, so it couldn't, it couldn't do, like it couldn't run the test. Yeah, so just, just put it on the simulator for now, because you need to connect your phone or do wireless debugging. But mm -hmm. for now, just run it on your simulator. But you could run I tests on the phone. I feel like it's been so much longer because they're home. I feel like in class, yeah. we, we need we all need extension. I'm sorry. <laughs> we need extension. We are having half a day of not doing project today. So half a day of not doing project. Oh, you mean because of the meetings? Yeah. Okay. Um, as we said, like we all home, we all going through like this catastrophe right now, that disaster. We're all trying to do the best we can with us. So don't overwhelm yourself. We have meetings today? Yeah, we have a meeting at 12 after this. So we're going to stop, like hard stop at 11.30. I'll let you guys take a break for like 30 minutes. And then we come back at 12 because Juke has a meeting with us. Oh, with that's everybody. nice of you. Cool. All right. Nice at this point, um, everybody, we're good, right? We have green checks here? Yep. No. All right, yep. cool. So let us continue on. Let's continue on to the objective. One here was to review what the unit test looks like. That's fine. But next, let's go a step further. So let's go to our DB user. Everybody go to the DB user. I know, I gotta close this out. I'm trying. Everybody go to the DB user. Alex. Yes. My test succeeded even though it was not supposed to. Um, your Xcode has a module. What do you mean? Like uh, you have the name, was my name test, not correct? No, my test passed, it okay. succeeded, but I put the wrong name, so it was not supposed to pass. There's something else happening there on your end. Um, it should fail, but let's take a look at it offline. You'll share your, your code with me later. Is that fair? Luba? Uh, Luba? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's okay, fine. cool. Thank you. Um, so next, let's continue on here. In my DB user, let's go ahead and import Firebase. 
So in DB user, go ahead and import Firebase. Right now, as you see, like it says, no search module. I might have to close Xcode and reopen it. Yeah, that's what mine is saying. Yeah. No, Alex, I think you mine spelled it You didn't wrong. spell it right, yeah. Alex. You spelled it wrong, Alex. Am I in the wrong app? Oh, no, no you, you spelled it wrong. You, you spelled oh. it wrong. Oh, fire, free, free, free base, right? Firebase. Okay. Firebase. Firebase. <laughs> All right, there we go. Thank you, Mr. Matt. Um, okay, so we're going to write an extension here and say DB user. And in our extension, we'll have a computed property. Computed property. The computed property just simply returns a user. So here we'll just say get user or get off user because off user is the currently logged in user. So get me an off user. It returns a user. User. Well, this is our first time seeing this. It's not a user, it's a DB user. Ah, uh, it's gonna be a user. It's gonna be a Firebase user. What? All right, I'm confused. Um, earlier I said we making our struct DB user because Firebase itself has a user property. So like the, the var user is a variable, not a function. But we're the parentheses behind it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Sorry. Got three off here. I'm doing things here. Yeah. Oh. Taking a look at what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, sorry. Computer property, computer property. Okay. Cool? Yeah, now I'm good. Okay, cool. Thank you for the clarification there. So now we'll say guard let user. And user we get from off dot off dot current user. And if we see current user here, there's a user. That user is a Firebase user. Everybody? When we say yeah. user.id or user.display name or user.uid, whatever, that's a Firebase user. Is that clear? Yes. That's why we said we do not want to conflict the names, have a user here, which is our own user, and have a Firebase user as well. So let me get some more space here for us. Uh, what is this? So my test uh -huh. is saying it's um, like I haven't even been able to still run my test because now the test is saying no such model, um, pod file, multiple targets, and it's the same exact name. That's the one that came with it. It was fine before. Uh -huh. And then just out of nowhere said it's not recognizing it. That's... Uh... In the test itself or in the DB user test? In the DB user test. In the test itself. Uh, try running the test anyway and see if it runs or not. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so we have our get uh, of user. It's a computed property. It simply just returns a user optional here. And now if we do have a user, a valid user, we simply return, we simply return user. That's still in the bar. Um, question? question? You still have it inside of the parentheses. Oh, wait, no return. No. Oh, okay. No, I'm outside. Uh, so here in the else statement, we return nil if there's no current user. And if there's a user. What's that? The screen. Oh. Okay, so at this point, we're pretty much done with our the code for the DB user. It was simply to illustrate we importing a Firebase module and what happens to our test now, right? So our test worked before, but now we have an import Firebase here and we have an extension. We're using Firebase modules, Firebase pods. So build, command B, and let's go to the test and validate that it still works. Everybody, are we okay with the DB user model? Yep. Okay. Anybody still there or can we go move on? We good? Okay. Good. You could always you could always jump in if there's a question. May? No, I'm good. Okay, cool. Perfect. So we'll go to the test here and we'll run our test again and validate that everything works. All right, maybe there's just not good service here. Um anybody I'll jump in offline just because I want us to make sure we're on schedule today. Anybody who's having issues will jump in afterwards and make sure that you that you up and running. Is that fair to everybody? Okay. Okay, cool. So we run the test again, but now 
our test worked before. Let me run the test again here. My test doesn't even run this time because now it stops me saying I'm missing a required module. I mean, yeah, I think that's where you were. Right. That's exactly what I'm right. saying. So the whole point gets us to this point here in our application. What do we do now? We're trying to run a test and we get an error saying missing required module Firebase. Why is that happening? Because now in our DB user model, we are importing Firebase, right? UI Kit doesn't have Firebase. Foundation doesn't have Firebase. No, no Apple API knows about Firebase. Firebase is an external third party library. We used it via CocoaPods. So now we need to go to our pod file and basically install pods for that test, for the test target. So we need to let the test target, we need to know, we need to let this test target here know that the test target here, this particular test target, know that there's a Firebase available to it. We need to install that Firebase to that particular target as well. So in our pod file, we need to now configure it to have pods for the top target here, which is our project target, and also our test target as well. So now we have two targets in our project. We have our regular target project here, right? With all our app delegate stuff, our DB user stuff. And now we have a new test target that we created that also needs Firebase. Questions? Any questions? No. no. Okay. Was Amini only the person that had that error when running test so far? No, I had that error, that error as well. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure that we all there. Um, okay, so now we'll go to the pod file. Everybody navigate to the pod file. Everybody navigate to the pod file. And basically, we'll write our pod file again from scratch this time. So the only thing I want us to copy here is copy the string that says pod file targets here. Copy that string. Copy the string that says pod file in quotes, in single quotes here. Copy that string in the single quotes. Copy it. And we'll go ahead and we'll create a pod file from scratch. Or we'll um, update our pod file. Everybody with me? Yep. Is everybody in the pod file? Cool. So let's go ahead and edit this. So first we'll say use frameworks. What does use frameworks do? Use frameworks is needed. This is needed to run third party libraries such as Okay. So here again, a pound is a comment very similar to Swift. We have comment in. In, in Swift, we comment with two forward slashes. This language we write in here, the language that the pod file is written in is Ruby. So pod file, the pod file is written in Ruby. Yeah, that shows up on um, GitHub. Awesome, very good. So we say use frameworks here in order for our particular pods to work with Firebase or our project to work with Firebase. Next, we'll go on. While we're here, we could also say on line two, we could remove that comment and go ahead and target iOS 13. So platform iOS, we target in 13. If you want to target from nine and up, you would keep it as nine and up as it was before. But here we say we're targeting iOS 13 and up. And this is okay even if you're not sure if your thing is updated? Uh, you mean the, pro the project you're working on? Yeah, because ever since we started doing pods, I have not even bothered to update my, my um, Xcode because I'm not even sure what is. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. The, big, the Xcode we're looking for right now is Xcode 11.4. That's a really good release, but it's not released yet. Every day I look to see if it's released. That's going to be a really good one to fix a lot of bugs we have in Xcode currently. Um, Right, bugs like putting 0 0.01 for constraints and stuff like that, just like stuff. Okay. So no need to update yet. As a matter of fact, let me take a look at it real quickly here. I don't think it's ready yet. Um, it's still in beta. And we're not gonna install export beta. Uh, it was Christmas. 
Yeah, it's still in beta. It's in beta three. So hopefully it comes out soon. Okay, next up, let's go ahead and create a function in Ruby. So here, uh, create a function in Ruby. A function in Ruby starts with the def keyword, define, and ends with the end keyword. So that's a block. And it has a function name. Our function name, we can give it any name. We'll call it project, project, or oh, yeah, project, project pods. This is the convention for Ruby, by the way. In Swift, it would say, our function would say project pods like this. In Ruby, you say project pods. Every language has their own convention, right? Web has their own convention. Uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, Swift, Ruby, name the language, they all have their own convention. So far, so good? Yep. Okay. Yep. So the point of this function is to have the default odds for the project. <coughs> so here we have the default pods for our project. The default pods for our project, we have pod firebase auth. We also have pod firebase firestore. And we could have Kingfisher and everything else, right? I'm not gonna install Kingfisher, but you could also have Kingfisher and whatever else pods you have. Um, cool. So this is a function. And we'll use that function to go ahead and target and add both targets. So this is a function we defined. And remember, again, a function, you define a function as a block of code you want to reuse anywhere. So in Ruby here, same thing. We have a function, and we could call it anywhere we want to call it. The way we'll call that function is with the function name. Right? Questions? Good? No. No questions. OK, so we'll continue on. So we have two targets. So project. Currently has two targets. Okay. Uh, we have a project target. And we have a test unit test target, which we just created. The project target is what we created when we did Xcode new project. So we did Xcode new project. And we got a target. Comes with a target, a default target. That target is this particular target here. So we have two targets. One target has our app delegate, all our files in there, info plist. Next target is the test target. It has the one test class in there. Also has an info plist as well. So those are the two targets we after. So how can we add the pods to each of those targets? So we'll start with the target. Again, target here is part of pod file, right? Pod file is, a, pod file is written in a language that supports this target keyword here. So we say target, oh sorry, we say target, and the target we're after is this first target, which is our main project. Our main project is called pod file multiple targets, pod file multiple targets. It has all those files in there. So this is the first target we're after. And the syntax, again, for adding pods to a particular target is do end here. And in that block, we'll call our function. So call the project, call the project pods. And the way we call it, we just write the name. That's it. So at that point, we have added the pods to this particular target here. Our next step is to also add the pods to the test target, which is the final step. So our next target is targets, but not just targets. It has test on the end of it. Correct, everybody? Everybody? Yeah. yeah. Right? So first yes. target is the one we created when we said Xcode new project. Second target is the one we created when we said we want a new unit test in our project. New unit test, it has test on the end of it. And we do the same thing. We say just call project pods function. Um, Alex? Yeah. The name of it, um, if you check in the, in 
Is it on the score? Did I mess it up? Go ahead. I, it is underscores for the test. So does it have to match exactly the name of it on the project navigator? Uh, yeah. This is what we copied earlier, correct? From our pods file. Yeah, that's the name of the project folder. Right, so that's the name of this one, correct? Mm -hmm. And then if we look at the test, it's the same. The only difference is there's a suffix test on the end. Oh, I see. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I was no, no, no. That's fine. That's fine. That's clarification <laughs> questions. We need those. We need those especially I was now. Right if you look right, correct the the source file, it's mm -hmm. scores for some reason. No, that's fine. Just make sure we're asking those clarification questions. Like, I don't want to keep going if there's clarification questions there. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. All right. Cool. Yes. So at this point, we just want to confirm that everything went well. So we'll go back to our terminal to go ahead and run. We'll go back to our terminal to run port install again, right? We'll run port install again. It's going to also associate the pods with the test target as well. Everybody, if there's any error, if there's any error in port install, it will give us an error. So now let's go to terminal. and run port install. At this point, everything went uh, successfully for me. I was able to install the pods, no problems there, right? Was everybody able to install the pods correctly? If there's any error, it will give you an error and then we'll go back to our pod file and make sure it's the same as what we have in Spring Pen. Wait, am I bugging out? Uh, fire, fine, fine. Firebase, fire, F, Firestore is F I R E S T O. Let me see. Can I see it thing again? Yeah, it's on screen, correct? Right? Can we see it? Yeah, yep. but it's saying that something. Oh, okay, got it. Are you good, Tiffany? Yeah. Okay. If anybody is not good, um, let us know verbally so we could help you if we can. If not, we'll take it offline. Yeah. Um, mine is not working. Yours is not working. Okay. So we have one person to come back to offline. We'll definitely have you up and running. Okay. Is Firebase, is Firebase off with a, uh, a forward slash? Yes. Everything is forward slash is here with Firebase. Now, when you go back to the test, you can import Firebase and run the test without it being an issue. Exactly. Are you able to do that? Do that? I'm doing it right now, yeah. Very good. Okay, so let's go to the final step and we will come back around. So let's go to test here and I'll just build first before I do anything else. And I should be able to run my test here. <laughs> Running the test. It's taking a while, it's taking so long. And we're back to where we started. Right now my test works with Firebase being imported in the DB user model, right? So this is the objective of the day and we were able to do it successfully. We were able to go to our DB user. The first place we started, we started our DB user struct, our model without Firebase, right? We ran the test, it was fine until we added Firebase and then our test a compiler fail there because it didn't know about Firebase. So what we had to do, we had to go to our port file and reconstruct our port file such that the test itself, the test target itself, knows about the Firebase pods. And the way we did that, we restructured our code here to use a function that includes the basic pods we need for our project. And in the targets itself, you could also have its own pods, right? In, in here, I could also have my individual pods for the test, for example, right? So this is like the best practice way to like configure your pod file such that it works with multiple targets. Here we have two targets, one, and we have two targets, cool? So this is where we'll be, the minute we start doing testing and we have any import statement that's not uh, Apple API. If it's on an Apple API, you need to go ahead and add it as a pod target in your portfolio.